Okay, if we don't end, end on time, it's not my fault because I'm here. <laughs> okay, I'll get I'm ready. I hereby receive my offer to end on time. Yes. <laughs> I have snacks. I'll just sit here and yeah. get snacks. Right? <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody who volunteered. Uh, just so you all know, who is helping keep this teaching alive and abroad, and this place happening, so John can have the space and the heart to teach. Thank you, John. Uh, the uStream video to and the upkeep of that would be myself. And Philip, stand up. And Paige, stand up. Everybody thank say you. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. The social media. So if you have not connected to ACI 10, please, uh, if you've heard of this thing called Facebook, it's a, it's a computer thing. No. Uh, it's, con it's on Facebook. It's an event. And Peter, everybody say hi and thank you to Peter. Hi. hi. Yeah. Thank you. And he'll maintain the online component, the, the Facebook, the blog, and the rest. Yeah. So you'll be updated there. The venue, Joanne and Richard, please say hello. Please stand up. Everybody say hi to them. Welcome, thank you. They'll be doing the offering, the the uh, cushions and the rest, and just making sure the space is fixed and when we're finished as well. Homeworks and quizzes, we have Maria, Barbara, and anyone else? How? Yep, yeah, okay. Stand up, say hi. hi. <laughs> so here are your first jobs. <laughs> Readings, homeworks and quizzes. Thank you very much. Uh, and then all the course material. Whiteboard is Paul. Say everybody say thank you. Thank you Paul. Yeah. Okay, and thank you very much. Thank you. So I, I very much appreciate Hector doing this and taking care of this. There are people who want to catch the classes on video and stuff. Hector has made that possible, so thank you, Hector. On behalf of those who are out there who are watching. Eleven of them. Take it. <laughs> um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a privilege and honor to teach, so thank you all for uh, contributing to help organize it and make it happen. Back to the story of Master Shanti Deva. So there are really there are, there are a few takeaway points here um, from his story, from the story of his life. And one is is that you know our our goal and our aspiration is is to become enlightened, to become a Buddha ourselves, right, in this life before we die. And um, we have to perfect the path. And the place where you do it is in your life, right? Wherever your life is and whatever you're doing in your life. Right? Um, we're going to do it in our house or our office, whatever our ordinary daily circumstances are, right? Coffee shop, wherever we hang out. So this book is designed to practice in your life as it exists now, right? No change in circumstances are necessary or required. Right? Uh, this path and this practice the path and practice of Bodhisattva is not about saying, I have to move to India, I have to quit my job, I have to change my whatever. You know, it's about where you are now, doing what you're doing now. Right? So, um, you know, this path, the Bodhisattva's way of life, is from the tradition of the man who started it. Right? Master Shanti Deva wrote the book and described this path of the, the life of the Bodhisattva and the Bodhisattva's way of life. Right? And so. <coughs> It's an interior practice. You know? The practice is about what you're doing with yourself in your own mind. Um, and it's even a secret practice. It's not meant to be something where you walk around going like, Hey, I'm a Bodhisattva. Did you notice? <laughs> you know? Not what Master Shanti David did, right? Very discreet, you know, very hidden. Very much just like, get on with it and don't tell people what you're doing. Do what you need to do. And don't talk about it. And don't show off. And, and don't have all the braggadocio going on, right? So... You do it inside, and maybe it'll become apparent to people sooner or later that you're a bodhisattva, maybe it won't, right? Um, but that's not the point, right? And uh, they can mistake you for years as someone who's just an ordinary person, right? Rather than some special uh, saint or, or holy practitioner, right? And the point is that it's going on inside, you know? I mean, uh, you know, Holy Kendra Pache lived in a suburban tract house in New Jersey for 30 years, you know? Nobody knew, really. Nobody. Most people didn't know. He was a very high, realized being, you know. And then, and then when he passed, you know, 
you know, and after he died, you know, his, he remained in meditation for three days, you know, with no breathing and no, no anything, and you know, it, and, and manifest great realizations and great attainments, you know. And for 30 years, he just there living in the New Jersey subdivision, you know, teaching and conducting his life as a, as an ordinary monk. Right? So it's like that, you know. That's the nature of of the high practitioner and how they approach things. So uh, meant to be private. <clears throat> so. Uh, it's a way of life that we live inside, and that's really the first important lesson uh, from his life story is, is that uh, it's an internal practice. It's not about acknowledgement from other people. It's not about people saying, oh, aren't you cool because you're a bodhisattva, you know, or having some kind of ego gratification or whatever. You know, in fact, it's probably counterproductive, right? So, uh, <coughs> Master Shanti Deva is, is uh, living his life to try to help people and just otherwise getting on with it in a quiet, private, personal way. You know, what do I need to do in my meditation? What do I need to do in my behavior? What do I need to do in my studies? What do I need to do in my life? And so it's like that for us. You know, it's the same way. It's, it's um, <clears throat> how can we learn what we need to do? How can we practice in the privacy of you know, our own meditation space with our eyes closed on a cushion? To, to train ourselves in the things we need to train ourselves in, and then go out into the world in a modest way and, and engage people in the body software, right? So, so we want you to know the basic structure of the book, <coughs> which, if you're going to be a body software, is going to be the basic structure of your life and your behavior, okay? Um, if you choose to try it, that is. I mean, you can either just you know go out and have a suffering life and die like everybody else, or you can try something different, right? <laughs> try a different approach, right? So um, if you try it, you'll find that it works and that there are amazing results and that life becomes very beautiful. And, and in fact, we are uh, very fortunate to have been introduced to the book. <coughs> so mm, please say Janchu. Janchu. Uh, ki. Ki. Semki. Semki. Penyun. So this is the uh, first chapter of the book. This is an outline of the 10 chapters of the book. And this is the name of the first chapter. <coughs> The function of the first chapter is, is, is to accomplish a couple of things. Uh, one is to get you excited about a bodhisattva state of mind, which is called bodhicitta. Uh, bodhicitta is a name for the way a bodhisattva thinks. And you know you can't do a bodhisattva's work until you're thinking like a bodhisattva, right? I mean, it's not possible to have bodhisattva activities if you're thinking like, what can I get for myself, and how can I screw that person over and get what they have, right? So, so it starts with your with your mind and the way you're thinking, right? <clears throat> but basically, uh, bodhisattva means somebody like a warrior, right? It's like behaving like a warrior. And uh, typically, I think we think, well, I'm not a warrior. I'm not, I don't behave like a warrior. I can't behave like a warrior. I'm an office worker. I'm living in New York City here, you know, in East Village or whatever. So warrior doesn't describe me, right? Um, but the enemy is your own mind. And the battleground is your office and your home and your family, right? And the parts of your mind are the thing that you're waging battle with as a warrior. Yeah. So the warfare will go on in your mind. And uh, in engaging this way, you're a much greater warrior than people who go around hacking people up you know, into bits physically. You know, It's much harder to fight against your own mind and your own negativities than it is to go out and kill other people. Right? <clears throat> so very difficult to fight with your mind uh, than it is much more difficult to fight with your mind than it is to fight with some physical enemy. So your office and your home is your will become your battlefield, right? <clears throat> and if you know the Lam Rim, those of you who know the Lam Rim, the first chapter covers the first two stages of the Lam Rim, which are the steps for people of the uh, uh, beginning and inter intermediate capacity. <clears throat> okay, All of that's contained in the first chapter. <clears throat> Please say Dikpa. Dikpa. Uh, dikpa is a verb that means to threaten, and a noun it means uh, as a noun it means bad deeds, something bad you did, said or thought. And shakpa is a word used uh, to describe when you split a log open, you're splitting it open. <coughs> it refers to confession. You open yourself, you open your heart, split your heart open for confession, <coughs> bear your soul, basically. <coughs> so if you choose to attempt the way of the bodhisattva which is really the only way to get out of suffering and reach enlightenment. There is no other way. It's not possible to attain enlightenment without, <coughs> without a bodhisattva path, the bodhisattva path. So <coughs> uh, you have to clean your heart. You have to purify your heart. And you have to prepare your heart to be able to engage in bodhisattva activities. And it's not something you do you know, behind a curtain. You do it by yourself. 
<clears throat> it's a kind of inner purification that you do that sets your mind up to be able to think properly and engage properly as a bodhisattva. So, <clears throat> so you know, basically we have to clean the negativities out, clean out the, uh, the things which are in the way of thinking like a bodhisattva. So, uh, prepares your mind, right? So, <clears throat> if you are, if a, when a bodhisattva looks at the world and relates to the world and engages the world, um, <clears throat> they're seeing a very different thing than, than an ordinary person. Okay, life is a very different experience for them. And uh, <clears throat> even if you learn a little bit of a bodhisattva path, aside from the possibility of overcoming death and suffering and all that cosmic stuff, I mean, it's just a lot more fun. It's a better way to live, you know. This bodhisattva attitude and ideal is a much more enjoyable way to go through life and just in an ordinary, mundane way. So life, your life becomes very powerful and very sweet. And things happen to you that are very difficult to imagine, literally, and that you couldn't even begin to imagine. Right? So the first thing you have to do is to purify, purify the negativities, right? <coughs> so then the third chapter is, mm, please say, Janchu. Janchu. Ki. Ki. Sem. Sem. Sungwa. Sungwa. Uh, <coughs> the third chapter is uh, acquiring the wish for enlightenment. And it has, acquiring has two meanings here. Uh, one is developing the mind of bodhicitta, getting the mind of bodhicitta. Uh, and you have to have the mind of the mind before you can start to act that way. You have to have the mindset before you can start to act that way. Secondly, it refers to the ceremony. Uh, there's a, a vow ceremony where one takes bodhisattva vows. And traditionally, uh, there are two ceremonies. You, you have one vow ceremony to uh, take vows to think like a bodhisattva. And then you have another vow ceremony to take vows to behave like a bodhisattva. Nowadays, both are combined into one ceremony, but uh, in the old days, it was considered better to have two ceremonies. Right? <coughs> so chapter three is not only uh, taking the vows, uh, and it's also talking about how you collect good energy. Okay, It's about collecting goodness and positive energy. So uh, what was chapter two? Purifying. purifying. Yeah, purifying negative energy, right? I mean, look, the same thing over and over and over in Buddhism, right? If you're going to be a pure being, you got to clean out your crap and collect goodness. This is that simple, right? If you want to be pure, clean up your dirt. Find your dirt, identify it, clean it, get rid of it. End of story. After your dirt's gone, fill yourself up with goodness. And that's it. What else do you need to know? Right? Now, how do you do that? A lot of work. <laughs> A lot of effort. <clears throat> so, but it's a standard theme. So chapter two is, look, clean it out, dude. Do this. <laughs> you know, and then chapter three is, fill it up with the right stuff. Fill your mind up with the right stuff, with the right energy. Collect good energy, right? So chapter three is all these techniques to collect good energy. If you're going to be a bodhisattva, if you're going to act like a bodhisattva, <clears throat> you have to collect all this good energy in advance. And there are all these special spiritual practices and meditations one engages in to collect that good energy, right? So... <clears throat> drawing on the whole spiritual energy of the universe, the positive spiritual energy of the universe, getting that into yourself, and then you're getting ready to be a bodhisattva and we're getting ready to act like a bodhisattva. Okay? So <coughs> we, we're going to uh, cover the ten chapters over the entire year. It's too much to cover in one course to do it really nicely. Ken Rinpoche, Holy Ken Rinpoche took 12 years to cover the guide, so you know it takes a while to cover it nicely, but we'll do it in, we'll do it in three courses. <coughs> Please say, uh, Bakyu. Pakyu. Tempa. Tempa. Uh, Pakyu is a little bit of a hard word to translate. I don't know, in Asia, I don't know if you know the custom, but when you get married, uh, the bride goes and lives with her husband's family, often. And then you're abused by the mother-in-law. You know, like if you step out of line, you do anything wrong, she screams at you and treats you wickedly. Okay. So that's what this ref word refers to. Uh, I mean, basically, it's like... Um, uh, it's saying, uh, you know, learning to be careful, being very careful, uh, so that you're not screamed at by the mother-in-law. To do something with great care or carefulness. So, and that's the idea when you when you're when you become a bodhisattva, right? You have to learn to be careful. Uh, you have to take good care of your newfound uh, aspirations and abilities, right? So it's like being a baby bodhisattva, right? If you got a baby, you have to be very careful with the baby, easily damaged, frail, fragile, you know, not not strong. So same thing, you're a baby bodhisattva and you have to be careful. Very easy to screw up, very easy to not pay attention, very easy to not be mindful, very easy to smash your bodhisattva intention and vows. So, you know, you have to really be careful. <coughs> so there's a whole chapter devoted to that, being careful to protect that, that 
that position. Uh, uh, fifth chapter, uh, please say Shishin. Shishin. Sumwa. Sumwa. Shishin is a state of mind, uh, especially useful in meditation. Uh, basically, it's it's uh, it's like an alarm button. When you're doing the wrong thing in meditation, the alarm goes off and says, "Whoa, screw up there! Back off! Go back to what you're supposed to be doing." Right? So uh, you're supposed to be meditating on compassion, and you're thinking about what's for breakfast. And the alarm goes off and says, "Hello," you know, come back. So um, it's a state of mind where you catch yourself. You, it's like a meta position. You set a little quarter of your mind to watch the rest of your behavior in your mind that says, "You doing what you're supposed to be doing?" No, you're not what you're supposed to be doing, right? <clears throat> so uh, you can apply that to your whole bodhisattva attitude, right? It rings, you know, when you're about to scream at somebody at work, the alarm goes off and you're like, excuse me, did you just take bodhisattva balls last week? Did you just <laughs> swear to like help all living beings everywhere be happy? You're about to scream at this person? Uh, I don't think it's consistent, right? <laughs> so it's like that, right? <clears throat> so, uh, you know, or you know, you're unhappy when someone gets something, right? You're like, they just got what I wanted, bastards, you know? Or, you know, some feeling of like, oh, I'm disappointed. Rather than being happy that they got something that you wanted, right? So again, it's the alarm goes off that says, why are you disappointed that they got what you wanted? Why aren't you happy? So like, you know, so this is the state of guarding your awareness, and then recollection goes along with that, dream up. And that's a state of mind that keeps you on your subject. It says, okay, you're off topic, come back to what you're supposed to be doing. So this chapter covers uh, both of those things, right? Setting the watchman when you're about to misbehave and then keeping you focused on what you're supposed to do. Okay? Uh, <coughs> next chapter, uh, please say Supa. Supa. Tempa. Tempa. Uh, Supa often is pronounced as Zopa, as in Lama Zopa Rinpoche. Uh, it's actually Supa, which means uh, patience or forbearance. Uh, it's a very specific thing. It means uh, the art of not getting angry, the art of not <coughs> losing it. Right? When the time comes, when conditions are right, when the poop hits the fan and you should be getting angry, you don't. That's what this is referring to. When something goes wrong in your life, you know, when your company's collapsing, when you get fired, when your wife has left you, when your children have written all over the new furniture and Sharpie permanent marker, whatever it might be, you know, you know, you, you, you know, you don't lose it, right? I mean, it's much easier to lose it when you're stressed, right? When we're stressed. So this is what this is talking about, you know. It's uh, and it doesn't have to be towards a person; it can be towards a situation, right? Uh, it could be just about your own life, you know. It's the art of not getting angry, or upset when things are not going well. And so there's a whole chapter devoted to that. Uh, next chapter, please say Sundru. 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 Tempa. Tempa. Uh, Sundru means uh, having a good time, doing good things, you know, really enjoying and being excited about goodness. And participating in goodness, you know, there's a great good thing that needs to be done, and you want to do it, and you enjoy doing it. I like helping people, you know. I like doing things to, you know, give people what they want. It feels good. I feel happy about it, right? So, you know, it's time to do some kind of mighty good deed, and you're excited to do it, and you're enthusiastic about it, right? So, there's a whole chapter devoted to that. Joyous effort, it's called. All right. Uh, next is something. Please say something. Something. Tempa. Tempa. <coughs> Something means meditation, the ability to meditate deep, deeply. It especially refers to a platform from which you can see emptiness or ultimate reality directly. Uh, and so there's a chapter on that, how to do that, what's involved. Uh, please say shera. Shera. Kilu. Shera means wisdom. Uh, and there are many kinds of wisdom. The ultimate one is how to see emptiness directly. This is the uh, ninth chapter, at which point Master Shantideva began levitating and disappeared, right? Uh, this last chapter, assuming you get enough clairvoyance to hear it, uh, is uh, no way loop. Please say no way loop. Uh, no way loop. No way means the act of dedication. Um, you take some good thing that you've done, right? Uh, like coming to this class, uh, aspiring to be a bodhisattva, whatever it might be, and you try to visualize the positive impact and the positive benefit. You know, like the you are the at the ground zero or the epicenter of this deed and this undertaking and this activity, like throwing a stone into into a still pond, right? You know, it ripples out a long long way, you know, <coughs> continuously in all directions. So the idea of dedication is is that you know what you're doing and what we're doing here tonight can potentially affect thousands or millions of people for many many years to come. You know, the fact that we're here having this class, the fact that these people were all 
listening to this and we're going to talk to each other and we're going to talk to other people, right, is going to have repercussions and it's going to spread out into the world and it's going to spread out into the universe, right? It's conceivable from our activity that we'll speak to someone else, someone will hear these things and do these things, and will actually attain and realize the goals and millions upon millions and countless numbers of beings will benefit from it, right? So <coughs> it's, it's, it is possible and that some, someone's going to get this and someone's going to do this and someone's going to realize and actualize this and that there'll be huge, huge ramifications and impacts, right? And so mm, people will learn this. People will learn how to clean their mind and their body to purify it. People will learn to turn, to become uh, an enlightened being and an angel. You know, and countless numbers of beings will benefit, right? So dedication means that you see this event tonight as the stone being thrown in the pot with the ripples radiating outward, you know, countless directions for a long time, right? and that that knowledge is going to be passed on and your activity and your efforts and your undertaking is going to be passed on. And so it's important to be very clear about it and to be very straight about it that there's a responsibility being here. This is very holy, sacred, life-saving uh, knowledge in this book. And so it's important to treat it as such and to think of it as such and to recognize that you're entrusted with that and you have some kind of responsibility about that, right? To do it, to spread it to other people, right? <coughs> <clears throat> you know, uh, you may even know someone who has done it. You know, I mean, it's conceivable that we know people who have already done this, who have attained these things, and who have gained these realizations, and who are at the at the end of the path. You know, and so uh, there's this precious holy thing of uh, recognizing what we're doing and the ramification of what we're doing, and how it's going to ripple and radiate out to countless beings and impact countless beings. And that the person who talks to this person who talks to that person, oh my God, that person over there is actually realizing the results of the path and gaining the attainments and gaining the realizations. And it's close to completing the path. You know? And that's that's dedication, you know, is understanding that and recognizing that and acknowledging that and inhabiting that potential and that outcome, and so just taking a few moments to to recognize it, to abide in it, right? So uh, very important. So that's the tenth, the uh, tenth chapter. So last thing, very quickly before we leave, if you're going to be a bodhisattva, you practice the six perfections, uh, and so the guide <coughs> uh, should cover the six perfections of a bodhisattva. So just to cover it briefly, if you look at the ten chapters we did, right? Uh, these are the six things a bodhisattva is supposed to do in their career. Uh, chapter six covers perfection of not getting angry, right? Wisdom is covered in chapter nine. Concentration is covered in chapter eight. Joyous effort is covered in chapter seven, right? <coughs> There's a chapter called Guarding Awareness, which covers what, do you think? Chapter five. Yeah, ethics, morality. ethical way of life. Some people call it morality. It's a little Billy Grahamish, you know, thou shalt and thou shalt not. Ethics is simply the the recognition of the laws of karma, and whatever you put out will come back to you. Mm -hmm. If you treat other people badly, you will suffer. Right? So it's leading a good life by living living according to ethical standards, and that's chapter five. So what's missing? Then the, the perfection which is which we haven't hit is the perfection generosity. of giving. giving or generosity, right? So where is the perfection of giving or generosity covered. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, right? What's the best thing that you could give to people? It's this, right? I mean, exactly what we're talking about in learning, right? So, I mean, if what we said is true, by learning this book and putting it into practice in life, you can reach paradise in this life and put an end to every suffering that you have, right? I mean, what better thing could you give to someone, right? The alternative is that people will just continue running around pursuing stuff until they drop dead, which is what we do in Manhattan, right? I mean, literally, you know, people just run around chasing until they drop dead sooner or later. So if you could put an end to that, <coughs> there's no greater gift, right? So um, to give that to somebody would be the greatest gift. So the act of dedicating uh, and, and teaching to people is, is the perfection of giving, right? The act of teaching people and dedicating it recognizing what it means to teach it 
recognizing the impact of teaching it, recognizing the ripple effect of teaching it, how it will go from person to person to person, and as people hear it and practice it and actualize it, that it has profound, radical, uh, you know, universe affecting implications. So, so that's the perfection of giving, uh, along with the dedication, and that's chapter ten. <coughs> so, um, look, we'll take a minute and meditate. Extraordinary things can start. Here, you know, there's nothing to say that millions of people won't be impacted by what we're doing tonight, and that countless beings won't benefit as a result of these teachings being passed on. So, you just take one minute to do a fin concluding dedication, meditation. So try to think and try to imagine that studying these things and practicing these things <coughs> could trigger something in other people, you know, that you're studying and you're practicing and what we're doing here will ripple out to countless people, some of whom will practice it and will actualize it, which will then have profound consequences for the universe. being upon being, teaching each other and talking about these things and feel the power of them practicing it and getting the results see in your mind many countless people actualizing the path attaining enlightenment as a result power of the goodness of what we've done here this evening, may these things truly come to pass by the power of the truth of karma and dependent origination. May every being everywhere quickly meet these teachings. May our efforts and may our intentions cause these truths, this understanding, this profound knowledge to be firmly planted in every being's mind, every realm, every dimension. May every being everywhere actualize the Bodhisattva path quickly in this life, coming to the end of every suffering, and may every being thereby attain stainless paradise instantly and quickly in this life. May we always be able to continue and finish it all. <laughs> well, I almost finished on time. I'll speak faster next time. I have homework, Sue. Thank you very much. First class. So. And readings? And readings and etching, Can we see a show of hands of how many people would like to have a reading printed out for them and a homework and a quiz printed out for them each week? Two? One, so, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yeah, it's all online. So what, what I will do is I will make sure the first email that goes out 
to the group will be where those teachings can be found, where the readings are found. Okay. Great. So if you're one of those ten people who wanted it, please see Maria to, to get it. Okay. If not, don't. <coughs> In other words, good night, please. Is it possible for people to do their homework uh, on the computer? Yeah, if you have. So it's neat? And then just email them to us? Whatever you wish. Yeah, if you have. Uh, I'll put that on the email. Or yeah. how about I give you the email? I mean, we save the trees and all that. I don't think you can write on the computer. How are you like? Huh? Yeah, right on the PDF. You can. Yeah. PDF comment? Huh? I'm trying to all these things are yeah, no, I've separated them for ACI career. Yeah. 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 They can copy paste it into work. Exactly. I know, right? Well, stress is good for you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.